learning that you uh, uh, receive uh, when you are in the UK is very diverse, very multicultural, uh, and a very warm and welcoming environment. Do we know enough about the UK universities? Well, there are four main types of universities in the UK. You have uh, what we call ancient universities. These were established well before the 19th century. They have a collegiate system. Uh, some of the most famous uh, ancient universities you may, you may know of, University of Oxford, that was established in the 12th century in the year 1167. Cambridge was established after that uh, in the 13th century, early part of uh, uh, the, uh, the year 12, uh, 1200 in England. Both these universities are in England. Uh, the University of St. Andrews was established uh, in Scotland in 1413. You might, you might have come across the name of St. Andrews, University of St. Andrews, because this was a university that Prince William, uh, the elder son of Diana, went uh, to uh, study his undergraduate degree. The year after he joined, St. Andrews' uh, uh, applications, particularly from females, increased twice for obvious reasons um, then we have university of glasgow this is an ancient university as well established in scotland in the year 1451 um, and then we have university of dublin this is in ireland it's the only university which is an ancient university and which is outside the uk just remember ireland is not part of the uk it's part of the european union so uh, these five universities are what we call ancient universities. We then have what are known as red brick universities, which were built uh, in the industrial parts uh, during the Victorian uh, times um, in um, between the, the 19th and early part of the 20th century. They are non-collegiate uh, universities. And to give you some examples, these are uh, what we would call red brick universities. They're called red bricks because if you look at the structures, uh, you know, uh, they've got, they were built with red bricks. Um, we then have what we call plate glass universities, which were established uh, in, in, uh, in 1960s. And they're called plate glass because they've got glass in their steel structures. And to give you some examples, there are a few uh, plate glass universities. The last uh, uh, type of university we have in the UK is what we would call post-1992, um, commonly known as modern universities. Uh, they are called post-1992 universities, not because they were established uh, uh, you know, in 1992 or after that. Many of these universities have 150, 200 year history. Uh, in fact, my university, University of Bolton, has over 150 year history. So these are not universities which were recently established. They are universities called post-1992 because in 1992, they were given university uh, awarding uh, powers and they're mainly Polytechnics and Institute of Technology. Now, you might re remember, uh, you might come across many of these type of universities, um, uh, you know, um, where a lot of international students study. Uh, and as I said, Bolton, University of Bolton is a post-1992 University. So there are four main types of universities, ancient, red brick, plate class, and post-1992. And just to, uh, to restate the University of Bolton uh, is a post-1992 university. Uh, it was originally an institute of technology uh, and established about 150 odd years ago. So what is the culture of, uh, of study in the UK? And what do I mean by the culture of study in the UK? Uh, British education, uh, as we saw uh, in, in the, one of the earlier slides, it's renowned worldwide. Uh, and that is, be that is because the type of education uh, that British universities impart is almost nothing quite like what other countries uh, uh, do. So in order to understand that, I need to go through a little bit of, of uh, the overview of higher education in the UK. Um, and we'll talk about England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Uh, in these three uh, countries of the United Kingdom, we have what we call a 13 plus three system. In other words, uh, students will spend 13 years in a school and then go on to a university uh, to get uh, their first degree. With most degrees here are three year duration. So by the time students graduate, they would have to spend 16 years in education. In Scotland, you have both a 12 and a 13 year system. Whether you've done a 13-year school system or whether you've done a 12-year school system, 
um, in order to make a 16 year uh, uh, period of education uh, culminating in your first degree, Scottish universities uh, offer a four year degree. So for example, in Nepal, you have a 12 year education cycle where after 12 years of, of school, you will take your 12th standard and then go on to higher education. That's quite similar to what happens in Scotland. In the UK, uh, in, in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, we have a 13 year system. A question that very few people really know, what is a university um, and, and how do you define a university? Well, a university is an institution of higher learning. When you go to a university, you are going to study uh, not at the primary, secondary uh, or vocational level, but at the higher, higher education level. Um, universities award degrees uh, and they can be undergraduate, postgraduate, honorary or posthumous degrees. Uh, posthumous uh, degree is a degree given to somebody uh, who is not living. He, has, uh, he or she has passed away uh, and his work or her work is recognized um, you know, after they, 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 they passed away. Uh, the most recent example of somebody being awarded uh, posthumously was Mother Teresa. She was uh, posthumously made a saint. Uh, a few years ago, about two or three years ago. More important, um, uh, a university is not only an institution of higher learning that awards degrees, but it does research. Uh, and this is what, uh, this is why universities were established. They were really meant to do research. Uh, if a university does no research, it's not really a university. Uh, these are some of the qualifications that are awarded by a British university. Uh, you will recognize some of these qualifications. The last qualification, MBA, whilst is awarded by many British universities, uh, it, uh, the concept of the MBA actually came out of the United States. Uh, it emanated out, out of the United States. The other degrees are very traditional British degrees uh, awarded by British universities. And you will see many of your universities also have these notations. There is a history behind this notation um, and why these notations are, the, are written the way they are written. Um, so very quickly, I'll give you one example. If you look at the first notation there, BA, um, most people would say that's uh, pronounced as Bachelor of Arts, um, but there is a, uh, the, the actual notation was derived many, many, many hundreds of years ago. Uh, the, the Latin din, uh, notation uh, pronunciation is Baccalaura di Artistic. Um, and similarly, BSc, Baccalaureate, Dissiantia, and so forth. Um, so that's a bit of an overview of higher education in the UK. Um, what is a learning methodology? How are you taught at a British university? This is very important. It's quite unlike any other country. So when you are here uh, at a British university, lectures are minimal. You are not going to sit in a class nine to five, Monday to Friday. Your timetable will be scattered. You will probably not be taught on a face-to-face -face basis for more than 10 to maybe 15 hours a week. Um, and therefore that leaves a lot of time. And that time is there because in addition to formal lectures, you have what are known as tutorials. And these are small uh, uh, class sizes where you interact with your lecturers and professors and, and ask them questions, debate with them. Uh, if you're doing a practical subject, obviously we need to give you time to uh, do your practical work. And this is all hands-on experience. You are not going to find somebody else doing the practical work for you. It will be yourself. A lot of hands-on work uh, at British universities. Some courses have field trips and study visits where, where, these, where these are applicable. So again, we need to give you a time for, for all this to happen. And then we need to give you time to think on your own. Uh, one of the key aspects of studying at a British university is that we develop your critical thinking and analytical skills. And for that, you need to do a lot of independent research, which is why British universities have their libraries open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The only time the library is shut is on Christmas Day. Some courses uh, have internships and work experience, so we need to make sure that you know, we have given you enough time. Now, because of all these other activities, I can't have you sitting in my class and teaching you nine to five, you know, Monday to Friday each day because you will not have time to do the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the work that uh, we will give you. Therefore, this is how you are going to be taught. Very minimal contact teaching during lectures. Most of the time is spent really working by yourself and doing things by yourself. 
In other words, you take responsibility for your own learning. You learn by doing things, not by somebody else doing them for you. This essentially is a learning methodology at a British university. A little bit about uh, the levels of higher education. When you come to a British uni university, if you are studying an undergraduate degree, your first year is what we would call level four. This is your first year at, for an undergraduate degree. Um, if you don't, if you get through the first year, you pass the exams and for whatever reason you want to leave the university, you will end up with what is known as a certificate of higher education. Hopefully you will all get through the first year and go to the next level, which is level five. Um, level five uh, is the second year. Uh, for whatever reason you want to drop out uh, and, and you leave, if you passed all the modules in, in, in your level five, you will end up with a diploma of higher education. Um, obviously we want to make sure that you go to the next level, which is level six. This is a level where you actually become a graduate and you end up with a bachelor's degree, which can either be three years or four years, and in one or two cases, uh, five years or more. After level six, you want to do further studies, you go to level seven, this is your postgraduate, after you graduate. Uh, and you can end up at the postgraduate level with either a certificate, a diploma, or the full postgraduate qualification, uh, a master of science or a master of arts. And then the next level, level eight, is your PhD. This is also postgraduate. So these are the levels uh, of higher education in England, uh, Wales and Northern Ireland. At the undergraduate level, we have what we refer to as a credit system. Uh, and very simply, in the first year, in order to pass the first year, you need to be successful in 120 credits. Um, if you pass in 120 credits, you go to the next year, uh, another 120 credits, you pass that, you go to the final year, another 120 credits, you pass that over a three year degree program. If you pass in 360 credits, you will end up with what is known as an honors degree. If you get less than 360 credits, but not below 300, you still get a degree, but that's not referred to as an honors degree. It's either an ordinary or a pass degree. So that's the undergraduate credit system. These are your classification. Uh, you pass in 360 credits, you are on to an honors degree. If your average is between 40 to 49%, you get a third class honors degree. If it's between 50 to 59%, you get a second class lower, which is often written as 2-2. If you get a, a second class between 60 to 69%, uh, that's referred to as an upper uh, second class degree, often written as 2 is to 1. Anything above 70% is a first class degree. Now you might say, well, getting 70% is not going to be that difficult. Um, in the UK, only about 10 to maybe 15% of the students that graduate each year end up with a first class degree. The vast majority of the students fall into the second class, either 2-1 or 2-2 category, and a few in, in the third class. And the reason is very simply, as I said in my earlier slide, 90% of the effort is yours, only 10%. You have to put in all the effort. And if you are academically minded and you spend a lot of time doing your academic studies, there is every possibility that you will end up with a first class degree. Most of the teaching uh, uh, is, is self-taught, self-learning. You develop yourself. At the postgraduate level, the credit system is a little bit more simpler. In order to get uh, a master's degree, you need to be successful in 180 credits, and these are usually split into uh, 120 credits of either examinations or assignments, and 60 credits of uh, a research uh, dissertation that you have to do. You get 180 credits, you end up with a master's. If you get less than 180 credits, but not less than 120 credits, you get a postgraduate diploma. If you get less than 120 credits, but not less than 60 credits, you get a postgraduate certificate. Uh, obviously, when, we, uh, when you come over to do a master's degree, you are aiming to get 180 credits. 
um, the, the postgraduate diploma and postgraduate certificate are what we would call exit qualifications. Okay, this is a little video about the University of Bolton. So the next uh, uh, bit of the presentation will, and I hope you can see this video. Okay, so that was uh, a little bit about uh, uh, the surroundings and, and in fact it was quite interesting. That's a short video, but you can see there were a lot of uh, uh, people, you know, working and doing things. Uh, and this is what I meant by the learning methodology uh, at British universities. You participate in doing things yourselves. Okay, let's move on. Where is Bolton? Well, Bolton is in Greater Manchester. It's a town and you can see on the map on the right hand side, it's it's just above Manchester. Uh, and uh, you know, that whole area is, is what we would refer to as Greater Manchester. Um, it's about 15 minutes to uh, Manchester City, uh, about an hour from Liverpool. And I put Liverpool there because this is uh, the city where uh, the Beatles uh, started, uh, some of you may know. Um, and it's roughly just under three hours from London. You cannot stay in London and commute every day to Bolton. <laughs> so you need to make sure that you, know, you live in and around uh, the Greater Manchester area. Um, by air, it's about, um, by air, it's about uh, one and a half hours uh, you know, to Paris, uh, Frankfurt uh, and Amsterdam. So obviously the United Kingdom is very close to Europe as well. A lot of students, you know, uh, tend to go to Europe, you know, for their for a short vacation to explore Europe. Uh, and Berlin and Madrid are about three hours. Uh, so Bolton is in uh, in England, uh, and it's in uh, Greater Manchester. And just some pictures of of uh, Bolton's population is quite small, around about two hundred and fifty to maybe two hundred and seventy thousand uh, people. Um, some pictures of of uh, uh, the Bolton Town Centre. 
The University of Bolton is actually located in the town center itself. You come out of Bolton uh, train station and you are literally within two to three minutes walking distance of all uh, the, the buildings of the University of Bolton. Why do students want, why would you want to study at, at, at Bolton? Where well, there are a number of reasons. Uh, we are first uh, in the UK for student satisfaction. Our student services team, you know, um, uh, are exceptionally uh, well geared to, to looking after international students. So we are number one in the UK for that, in the Northwest of England. We have a very diverse uh, and, and multicultural different nationalities so you get to mix with students not just from uh, from from Nepal itself but obviously from the UK from other parts of the world and that improves and increases and enhances your network uh, uh, possibilities um, we are very very competitive when it comes to our tuition fees uh, in addition to that uh, the cost of living uh, in, um, in in a town center such as Bolton or in Greater Manchester is a lot less if you were living in large cities like, like Manchester or London. We work with over 70 different um, organizations and, and, and companies, which means our courses are directly geared to industry. And that enhances your ability to find suitable employment and internships with many, many different types of companies. In the UK overall, we are fifth for teaching quality. Uh, our class sizes are quite small compared to other British universities. This gives us uh, the opportunity to give a lot of personal attention to students and, and to enhance that uh, learning uh, capabilities and development. So these are some of the reasons why uh, one would want to study at the University of Bolton. Like every other British university, we have our own uh, on-campus accommodation. It is guaranteed for international students. Uh, the cost is roughly just over £3,000 for an academic year and uh, the uh, the cost would include you know all uh, uh, in internet access, gas, electricity uh, and, and so forth. Um, and being you know within the town centre you will not incur any travel or transport cost because the buildings are literally within five to ten minutes uh, of the main campuses. These are all single rooms, uh, no shared facilities. Um, the university has several schools or faculties, as we call them over here. Collectively, these schools, faculties and centers uh, offer over 200 different types of programs in areas which include engineering, creative technologies, uh, such as computing, health and well-being, education, psychology, art, uh, law, biological sciences, sports, clinical and, and biomedical sciences, dental sciences. Um, uh, you know, uh, within uh, within the university, we have several centers. One of them uh, is is the Center for Islamic Finance, where we do a lot of research and offer uh, postgraduate degrees in Islamic finance. Uh, obviously, business programs would uh, come under our Institute of Management. Uh, so uh, anything to do biz with business uh, and, and the programs we offer fall under our Institute of Management. Collectively, there are roughly 170 to maybe 200 different types of undergraduate and postgraduate degrees that you can choose from. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we, have, uh, we, we are one of the National Motorsport Engineering Universities. And if I can show you on the picture on... The last picture at the bottom on the right hand side, uh, you will see a lot of cars there. These are all Formula One cars and rally cars. Uh, some of our students are doing uh, mechanical engineering, motorsport engineering, um, you know, have an opportunity to not to drive these cars, but to certainly look at them and to work on them. Each of those cars is roughly a quarter of a million pounds. Okay, let's move on. What is your investment? Um, education is an investment, the returns are long term. So it's not a cost that you incur and think of education as an investment, not as a cost. Uh, and if you do that, you will self motivate yourself to do well because you want a good return from your investment. So if you come to my university, what is your investment? Most of our undergraduate degrees are 12,450 pounds per annum. 
Uh, unlike other universities, if you start, let's say, for example, you start a course this September, uh, your first year fees will be £12,450. That remains the same in the second and the third year. Although the university may increase the fees each year, your fees will not increase uh, if you start in a given uh, academic year. So over the next three years, it remains the same. This is quite unlike any other British university who they will increase their fees every year, whereas we don't. Uh, most postgraduate programs are also £12,450. The MBA is £13,950. That's a little bit more, uh, you need a bit more investment on that. Now, in addition to uh, uh, the investment, we do have a scholarship scheme. Um, uh, the last figure then 9135 is the, the maintenance that you would need to show uh, for your tier 4 visa. Uh, in addition to the, I've said a little bit about uh, the, the, the investment, we have a scholarship scheme which is merit based. You can get up to £5,000 if you're an undergraduate student over a three year period, you can get up to £5,000. The application process is very straightforward. My colleagues at Biz Education and, and, their, uh, and, and their professional staff in, in Kathmandu, in Nepal, would be able to advise you on that. But you, get, you make an application, your offer will either be a conditional or an unconditional offer. Uh, once your offer is unconditional, you are ready to accept. Um, you go through what is known as a credibility interview. It's a very straightforward interview, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, towards the end. Um, you make, uh, you then pay your fees and hopefully you get your uh, uh, cash. This is where we then sponsor you. So it's a very straightforward process. All our application process is online. And as I said, my colleagues at Biz Education will be able to help and guide you uh, uh, in, in, during our application, uh, you know, if you want to make an application. Okay. What are our entry requirements? Undergraduate year one entry, you need to score a minimum 60% in your um, Nepal 12 standard, uh, overall aggregate 60% or above, uh, a GPA 2.4. Most undergraduate courses require an IELTS overall six with nothing below 5.5. Five. And if you're doing the PTE, uh, the requirement is 50 overall and no skill below 42. You need to make sure that you have no more than a two year gap past your 12 standard. Um, now, sometimes what happens is you might have you know, done your 12 standard say in, in the year 2016 or 2017. Um, we can consider those applications if they have um, evidence of uh, further studies uh, which uh, are recognized and, and um, uh, uh, you know, have the appropriate academic level. So for example, uh, if you have passed out before 2018, you might have gone on to do a technical diploma, for example. We will consider that uh, as an academic qualification. Um, but generally speaking, there should be no more than two year gap. We will consider waiving the IELTS requirement under certain conditions. These are one, if your 12 standard is 70% or above in the English component, uh, that is a GPA of 2.8, we will consider waiving the IELTS. At the postgraduate level, the minimum entry requirement is a second division or a second class or equivalent CGPA degree. Normally most degrees in Nepal are four year degree. There are uh, University of um, Tribune, we will consider a three-year degree. The rest are all four-year degrees. The IELTS requirement for most of our postgraduate courses is 6.5 overall with nothing, normally nothing below six. And the PT requirement is 58 uh, with no skill level below 50. As with the undergraduate, we will consider waiving IELTS at the postgraduate level. If your 12 standard was completed within the last four years um, and it was 70% uh, or GPA 2.8 or above in the English component.
a little bit about credibility interviews. Uh, I don't like using the word credibility, but this is what uh, uh, has now stuck into everyone's mind. Essentially what happens is when you submit your tier four visa application, you may be called up for an interview by the UKVI. For that reason, you need to make sure that you are prepared for that interview, which usually lasts around about 20 minutes. And the kind of questions that you are looking to have reasonable answers to are, you first and foremost, you need to be prepared. If you don't prepare, then you will not get through the interview. Um, as far as my university is concerned, the credibility interviews will be done uh, by the university staff. So be prepared. And the kind of questions that uh, you know we will be asking would be, uh, you know, what are the benefits of studying in the UK as compared to your home country? Why do you want to come to the UK to study? Why not, you know, stay behind and study in Nepal? So you need to understand a bit about, you know, uh, the benefits of studying in the UK. I've actually said a few things about that. If you go back to one of my earlier slides, you know, why study in the UK? I have given you a lot of answers there, and, you know. Um, a lot of the uh, responses and answers that you're looking for are on the University uh, of uh, Bolton's website. So you need to check the Bolton's website. A lot of the answers will be there. Look at the facilities. Where in the UK is the University of Bolton? Well, you should by now know where it is. It's located in, uh, in England, uh, in, um, in uh, Greater Manchester, about 15, 20 minutes away from Manchester City. Look at the website, what are the facilities that are offered at the university? You could be asked, you know, what facilities do we offer? So if you haven't looked uh, at the university's website, you may not be able to give an adequate uh, response to that kind of a question. Understand the program that you are, uh, you know, you are, uh, you know, wanting to study the level of the program, how the program is examined, course assessment, look at the modules, all of this, information is available on the website. And then why would you want to study at, at Bolton instead of other universities? I've given you a few examples of uh, Bolton's uh, uniqueness, you know, uh, number overall fifth in the UK for teaching quality. We are number one in the uh, Northwest for student satisfaction, very multicultural uh, student body, and, you know, working with uh, over 70 different types of organizations which enhance your employability and opportunity to to uh, obtain internships uh, and, and post-study work. Um, if you have a previous study gap, try and make sure that you can explain this to uh, whoever is interviewing you and the reasons for your gaps. And then look at the financial consideration. It is a lot of investment. Uh, what are the return on investment? Uh, you know, if you come to the UK, um, you might be asked questions about accommodation. Where will you stay? Try and figure out what the cost of living is going to be in and around uh, the University of Bolton. And what you intend to do once you complete your studies. You know, you must have reasons. Uh, you must have decided on a particular career path. Uh, how is the course going to help you achieve your post completion studies uh, uh, aspirations? You must be aware of your tier four student responsibilities. As a university, we are going to be your sponsor. As a student, you have certain responsibilities. As a sponsor, we have certain responsibilities as well. The key thing about uh, tier four responsibilities is attend your classes, do your assignments, um, and you know, hand them in on time. It is very important that 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 you you, you attend your classes uh, and uh, you know make sure that you uh, do all the work that is given to you the university can withdraw you if your attendance falls below a certain percentage we are obliged to inform the ukvi and if we do that you are effectively withdrawn from the university you are no longer uh, as a tier 4 student because you have breached the conditions of your uh, tier 4 uh, visa uh, and, um, you know, you'll be asked to go back. So just be aware of your tier four responsibilities. In other words, if you fail to prepare, then be prepared to fail. Um, so prepare yourself for a credibility interview uh, and you should be fine. 
I think that is about the end of the presentation. Yep, that's the end of my presentation. My email ID is there. What I suggest you do is uh, keep in touch with Biz. I will now um, take any questions that uh, that you may wish to ask, and if uh, uh, Biz could take over, please. Thank you so much, Raji. That was very informative. Uh, even we have got to, uh, you know, update most of our knowledge. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, few of the students have already write in their queries. One is from uh, Rafi. And he has particularly said, how is the current situation of the UK? Uh, would you like to answer that, Raji? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, uh, like every other country, uh, we are at the moment still uh, in a lockdown situation. Uh, I believe um, probably sometime next week, uh, we will be getting some further uh, information from the uh, UK government, uh, which is essentially directed uh, in whatever it uh, tells people to do by the public health uh, authority in England. Um, the, in the nicest possible way, uh, if I could, uh, if I could mention that the the rate at which COVID nineteen uh, incidences are being report ha reported has gone down. So we have gone past the peak, and the numbers of uh, uh, patients that are being admitted to our hospitals has come down. Uh, people are still tragically passing away because we've had uh, we've had a lot of people who've been hospitalised. So there are still some deaths happening, um, you know, every day. Um, as far as the university is concerned, we were hoping to have a May intake. So all the students applied for May have been deferred to September. We are going for September uh, until and unless uh, you hear from the university, the September intake is still happening. Uh, and we hope that, you know, over the next few weeks that uh, the situation improves uh, if if there are any changes you know i will certainly come back to you uh, this is the situation with most in fact all universities uh, as as uh, as far as i know um, we are going for september so uh, that that, that uh, answers uh, that might answer the second question also which is by daniel taman he asked about the possibility of, uh, you know, the September intake that you just mentioned. Uh, will there be any uh, possible possibility of September intake for uh, University of Bolton? Yeah, well, as I said, uh, at the moment, we are looking at September intake. Uh, just if I could also add, um, if, so, if, if a student, uh, 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 you know, uh, applies for a September uh, start, um, and goes through uh, everything and is at the verge of uh, uh, being assigned a CAS. His uh, end, uh, his last date of enrollment will be 30th of October. So we have extended the uh, latest date of enrollment um, for about five weeks post the start date. Most of the courses that we offer start around about the second, third week of September. But because of the COVID, uh, uh, issues uh, the uh, the last year of enrollment has been extended right up to 30th of October that gives students uh, enough time it gives the university enough time to see what uh, you know uh, changes you know may uh, might have uh, you know happened uh, uh, earlier uh, uh, you know in, in July and August so every student that applies for September the last date by which they must be here is 30th of October subject to travel restrictions and of course, you know, airports and everything, you know, being open, airlines functioning, um, you know, um, uh, normally. Okay. Uh, we can uh, take in a few more questions. So students, if you have any questions uh, for Raji here, uh, we'll have uh, five more minutes for getting all your questions. So please write in your questions. So Raji, what will be the end date of the uh, University of Bolton will take the, you know, the applications? Will there be any end to that? Like the end date? Okay. Uh, again, you know, uh, assuming that, uh, you know, we are back to some kind of normalcy, um, we will be accepting applications right up to the end of July, early August, given the fact that, you know, the, the last date of enrollment would be 30th of October for September. So we will be taking in applications 
even perhaps you know beyond beyond uh, beyond July, maybe even uh, you know end of August. You see, um, so there is uh, you know there's plenty of time. I would nonetheless advise all students to actually make an application as early as possible. The earlier you apply, the more time you get to do your preparation. Um, the more time you will get to make sure that you are ready for a, a possible credibility interview. And in case you know you have uh, uh, an offer which is conditional on, on, on IELTS, for example, or PTE, you know, you have enough time to actually register and take those tests. Uh, can I also say that we will also accept the Duolingo test? Okay. Uh, and uh, there is also the, the IELTS indicator test, which is uh, an online test which uh, IELTS have recently launched uh, in, uh, in the light of uh, their main centers being shut. So students can't go and actually uh, you know, do the test there. So they've got an online test. It's called IELTS Indicator. Um, uh, the requirements are exactly the same. You, know, you need to get six uh, you know, for an undergraduate degree and 6.5 for a postgraduate. So, and that is done you know, from the comfort, comfort of your home. Um, it's a, I think they charge about $149 for that. The Duolingo test is also an online test. Uh, that is a lot cheaper. Um, and again, it's done, uh, you know, from the comfort of your home. Uh, you get results within two days uh, of the Duolingo test. I will uh, send you information on the on the scores that we are looking for. Uh, um, hopefully, uh, sometime next week. Okay. And Raj, one more uh, question: Do you uh, is the university um, planning to, you know, limit? number of students um, or is it also depending upon the situation like for MBA you have certain limit limitation on the student number no where did you get that information from we will accept good quality students <laughs> no there is no there are no limits um, there are no limits um, and um, which is why I said the earlier you apply the better because it, it it makes sure that you know you are well prepared. It makes sure you are well prepared. One of the things that students, um, one of the things that you know students often don't think about is you know they delay their application process you know until the very last minute. If you leave it to the last minute, you are in a rush, and things may not work out the way you want them to work out. So there is no charge for an application. Uh, you know, if you are, if you make an early application, if you are made an offer, that offer is guaranteed provided you meet the conditions. Right. So, um, do we have a few more questions uh, from the students or even uh, from our staffs if we have any questions for Raji? Hello, Raji. Uh, yes. is, is there anything like uh, regarding, you know, second year scholarships? So, is there yes, well, let me, yeah. Um, at the undergraduate level, yeah. at the undergraduate level, um, in the first year, if anyone scores eighty percent or above in that twelfth standard, they will be eligible for a scholarship of two thousand seven hundred and sixty pounds. Okay. If they pass the sec the first year, go on to the second year, they will get another thousand pound scholarship, and in the final year, another thousand pounds. So, for an undergraduate student over a three year period they could be looking at just under 5,000 pounds worth of scholarship. Okay. All right. At the postgraduate level, uh, the tiers are the same. Um, you know, the top tier postgraduate scholarship is 2,760 pounds. And that is for somebody who's got a first class with distinction in their undergraduate degree uh, from Nepal. Um, uh, if they've got, uh, if, you know, if the, the second uh, tier is uh, 1,760, so that somebody who's got a first class degree and then somebody has got a second class degree, you will get uh, the low, the third tier uh, scholarship of 760 pounds. So uh, this scholarship is like uh, available for the current student as well, isn't it? Yes, yes. Every student gets, uh, all the students, uh, all international students, you know, are eligible. You don't have to apply for a scholarship automatically when your application comes through. We will look at it, we will assess it, and uh, you know, uh, we will send a confirmation that this is a scholarship that's been awarded. Yeah, for, for my experience as well, experience, please make sure you do your research about the university and the place where you're going. The University of Bolton, yeah, the surrounding area and the life of the UK and life you in Bolton, please do your research, okay? 
your research is more important thing than you come here okay so please do your research first and if you have any doubt please contact with our my my admission teams and everyone and if you want to talk to the existing existing students we are happy to like uh, connect with them as well but you are the guys need to do the research first okay your research is a really important thing uh, coming to uk so just do your research about the tuition fee about the education system about the university quality everything please okay so uh, because raj ji already explained about the university bolton and university courses and you guys already applied for the courses so make sure you do your part of job as well because we are here to guide you for for your for the future but we miss something you need to do it by your research as well okay so um, we'll try to help you in every aspect of life but please do your research um harry can i just uh, add some uh, ask something um are there any students who already have applied and got an offer yeah uh, is there anyone here already got the offer from bolton ban is there anyone here who already got the offer from bolton or any any student who got the offer please let us know yes sir the viraj uh, porel sujit kharkani says uh, smita has already received uh, okay. offer from university of bolton uh, are they are they in this um, are they here are, are they watching this i mean do they want to ask yeah, any specific yeah, yeah, question they are in our panel as well sir Okay. Do they want to ask any specific questions? Yeah, guys, if you want to ask any questions regarding uh, the Bolton, please uh, feel free now. Okay. Can I also ask? Has anyone got an unconditional offer? Yeah. Anyone got unconditional here? Um, I need to check. Yeah. Yeah. I think a maximum student has got unconditional offer. All right. Uh, what about you? You, uh, you know, you got unconditional or conditional offer letter? Oh yeah, he got the unconditional, Rajji. Viraj Powdel got the unconditional offer letter. Right. We he got the unconditional offer. Um, okay. Whether your offer is conditional or un unconditional, can I just make request that you read the actual offer? uh just make sure you read the offer yes um and and follow the instructions again you know my colleagues at bees you know will be able to to guide you there but at the end of the day remember um that you know it is your offer uh, and that you know you have to uh, make sure you understand what that offer means yes um and uh, uh, if i can uh, tell bani um that uh, if if they have already got unconditional offers the first thing that you need to do is to accept those offers yes so we can move on with the next stage now uh, i'm sure uh, you are doing it but just in case you know there are students who are still um thinking about uh, accepting the offer remember accepting an offer doesn't mean much other than the fact that you know your place is guaranteed yeah. okay and one more thing i will i like to add as well guys because i already said uh, these things Uh, millions of times in my interview and my interview session uk is a not easy place to come it's not easy place to live it's really hard this country always welcome a student for a genuine one if you have enough money if you have enough resource your parents are financially well and if you feel like you have some extra please then come don't think like you come here work and you're going to spend your money and you're going to fulfill your desire it's not like that see the thing now when this covid happened lots of students are saying they are suffer because you need to do your research first okay because spending like 12 to 13000 is not a small amount okay you need to do your research as well okay so please i always say please think twice or 10 times okay before come to uk and if you decide then make a clear vision we are here to guide you but we need the vision from you as well you know what are you going to do you know so please do your research and my team like that we come so uh, see we have a like um, three staff train from british council and we have a train from like uh, various sources so we give you the right advice and the current situation in in the uk but like we need the feedback from you as well 
okay and please uh, check your financial background check your course where you want to go and the course where it's going to lead you you know whether it's going to be like uh, give you the right path or not please do that one as well okay because um, i saw like lots of students first like they say okay i want to go to uk and later on when they reach here they say i want to change the course and please we didn't have that facility here in bolton so the course you coming from nepal to bolton that's the final course for you for four years for uc okay there is no ch course changing facility in bolton okay yes can i just sorry uh, harry if i can just add on uh, that as well um this is part of the tier four responsibilities that students have. Uh, choosing the right course is is very very important. Uh, if any students, you know, feel that they are unable to choose a particular program or they want some guidance, uh, by all means, you know, let me know and I will uh, I will then give you. Uh, I normally do this when I'm traveling, but unfortunately, I'm stuck. Um, but I will be able to help and suggest, you know, uh, options that you might consider based on, on your previous academic background. Yeah. yeah that's the one. Yeah. Uh, anything, anyone uh, wants to add anything or any questions, guys? They're all very shy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we can, uh, maybe move on to the next section uh, yeah. related to the visa and any documentation uh, queries. Yeah. So uh, Kedar sir would like to speak something regarding, uh, you know, the visa or documentation related. And uh, another one as well, if you guys want to say anything regarding UK, life in UK, and uh, you know, me and Ursa, like I'm a director of visa education, I'm here in UK, okay. If you guys want to ask any question, you are feel free to ask. Okay, and it was used to be a student of University of Central Language is doing MBA. Okay, so she already uh, done the course in here. So you you can ask any sort of questions. We are happy to help you. I think <laughs> they only got the information, Ursa. Um, yeah. So move to next way, isn't it? So any visa-related questions? I think visa-related questions, uh, Kedas already explained. Uh, we already explained uh, from our counseling as well. The most of the students already received the offer letters, so uh, they already got the information uh, regarding that one. Uh, okay. So yeah, you can consult. Uh, yes, Kedas Ursa has recently done her MBA from UK. So if, if she shares some of her experiences, so I think that would be great as well. So, um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, how, how you went, how you studied and what you're doing currently, these things. So I think these things will be helpful to those who are planning to go. Sure. Uh, sure Quick sure. review of your experiences. Sure, Kedar, sir. <laughs> so, uh, it's, I came in, I came here to UK um, as a student, uh, but I'm studying in uh, University of Central Lancashire. Uh, however, I came here through a business education itself. And um, when I came here, I took, uh, I took my time. I did not rush to find um, jobs. I focused more on my studies and um, eventually slowly in my internship years, uh, I got the opportunity for uh, the internship and a uh, job here in business education. So um, it, it's, it's kind of two sides of story. There has been difficult time, there has been good time. So it just depends on how you take the challenges, I suppose. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> So how easy was it for you to manage your tuition fees of the remaining intakes and maintaining your living cost? How easy was it for you to, to do all those things? It, uh, what I did was I, uh, I actually asked for, I came uh, with my husband, so we actually asked loan from our parents and we paid in full amount, but now, um, uh, so I, I don't think my situation would, <laughs> uh, be, it will, uh, you know, like uh, kind of explain to the situation, but I have, uh, I have like in this education here, 
most of the student comes in with some queries uh, and I've seen that they are having difficulties. They do their uh, part-time job. They, uh, they try to accumulate money. They are uh, even performing their studies well. So uh, I, I can't just say from one point of view, for, but for me right now, I'm, accumulate, I'm trying to collect the money and uh, you know, pay rents and uh, also give back to my parents in future. Can I, can I just add something to that? Yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm I'm going to um, share something uh, again. So just bear with me for a second. Can you see this? Yeah. Yes, Raj. All right. Uh, so uh, I do several different kinds of presentations. This is uh, to do with uh, since you're talking about you know finding jobs and you know what are the opportunities and all that. I've just got a couple of slides. If I can just quickly go through this. Uh, first and foremost, finding a job can be a challenge. So you need to plan your career. I, I go back to what I keep on telling when I do my counseling, you know, if you don't prepare, then be prepared to fail. So students, you know, if you are listening, you should plan your career well. Uh, one of the key things about planning a career is you need to be motivated. Nobody's going to do things for you. You need to do things by yourself. Motivation is very key. Try and be aware of all your strengths and weaknesses. You know, focus on your strengths and don't worry too much about your weaknesses. We can't all be, you know, a good at everything. Try and develop a job that you might want to consider based on your on your academic studies and what what you know you might intend to study. Do the research, get the information. This is what a lot of students need to do. Um, get the information, look at the options that are available. Talk to people that interest you, know, you in, in the occupations that you are interested, find out what it's like, uh, and choose then to the right uh, industry, the right organization. There are opportunities, you need to grab them. What do employers look for? Uh, today's employers look for your ability, how good are you at communicating effectively, analytical skills, ability to make decisions, problem solving skills, conduct and explain, uh, you know, the ability for you to explain the research that you have done and whether you are good at organizing your ideas and resources. Uh, and of course, work, being able to work in teams. These are the kind of skills that employers look for. How do you boost your employability? Any work experience, whether it's part-time, internship or voluntary, is very, very useful. Uh, if you are at a university, get involved, extracurricular activities, get involved in student societies, you know, student union, uh, sporting committees, lead on academic projects. You know, if your particular group has a project to do, take the initiative and lead on it. Um, and be a representative of your course. It is a very competitive world out there. Get involved, be proactive, and develop your skills. Um, how do you find a job? What are the resources available to you? Every university has a career center. Make use of that. Go and talk to you know, the staff working in career centers. There are career fairs which are held by the universities. Attend them. Uh, employers come to the university uh, campus you know, to talk about their organization. So you know, once they've done that, you know, Go back to them, see what opportunities are available. The universities have skill sessions and workshops. Attend those kind of skills sessions and workshops. <coughs> Network with, with students, not just from within your uh, uh, faculty, but from other faculties as well. Who knows? Sitting next to you, or, may, or you make a friend you know, at, at a university, that person could go on to become you know, um, the prime minister or, or the president of a country. And if you are his friend, you know, you can see what opportunities are, are available. There are online databases, uh, you know, uh, have a look at those. A uh, lot of graduate job vacancies are, are on websites. Look at professional, those who are doing professional courses like engineering, like the, the sciences, uh, accountancy, those kind of, look at the professional bodies. They have uh, journals, they advertise jobs. <coughs> there are opportunities, identify and pursue them. Uh, Sorry, that's that's all I wanted to, um, to, to to say. So very quickly, I've been through that. Um, over to you. Uh, sorry. Thank you so much, Ajay. That was that, that was that was a great overview of what I was trying. Like I was also trying to get in that information. <laughs> 
Uh, so thank you so much. Um, so uh, as we have a few of us, uh, <laughs> would it be okay for students to unmute your mic and ask questions if you uh, are having difficulty in typing the questions? Because now five more minutes and I think we will be concluding. Is it Hari sir? Uh, you're on mic, a mute, a mute, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we, we have just five minutes to go guys and then we conclude the, all this uh, uh, information session today. Okay. And if you have any queries regarding your studies, regarding your um, life, please let us know now, your applications, okay? Um, So if you guys you can also unmute your mic um, if you have uh, problems in uh, typing in your questions. Yep. We are happy to answer, okay? You can unmute your mic and come to us as well. And guys, don't sigh, okay? Because that's <laughs> what happened like in an interview if you guys going to sigh. <laughs> you need to be... I think, the... so, I think no one is asking. So on behalf of all the students, I, I'd like to request Hari sir to brief uh, a short briefing on the possibilities of uh, September intake and the current COVID scenario of UK. I think that's what they are um, <laughs> interested to hear. <laughs> yeah. Quick well, overview, then we can go for. In a safe side, say, in a safe side, what I'm going to say, okay. If you ask me genuinely, okay, uh, the September intake uh, is 50 50. Okay. Uh, because uh, as I predict before, as well, may, may not going to happen, it's not happened yet. Yeah? So similar things like September, what happened like, uh, is there are several factors we, uh, we need to look, okay? First is like whether Nepal government going to be allow them to travel from Nepal to UK. That's the one thing. Okay. <laughs> UK government, whether they allow them to come fly from Nepal to here or not, okay? That's the two questions we need to uh, give the answer. So that answer we'll get, I think, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, because uh, the UK mortality rate is gone uh, slightly down, and the, I think life gonna be. We hope life gonna be easy in a couple of weeks. Time. If everything sorted out uh, by June, month of June, then I see the possibility of September. Mm -hmm. Okay, if things not sorted out by June, then there is no options. We have to think for October or January. Okay, so you need to prepare. And I, I always ask a student, okay, if you feel, you know, you are losing your time and your, uh, you know, career, uh, please join the course. Okay, so I'm trying to connect, you know, I have some ideas because I need to send Raji as well. I have some ideas how we're going to like, you know, bring those ideas together so we can give you some kind of, uh, you know, facility to start your course. Okay, whether it's going to... Yeah. So yeah, one of the things um, we are looking at, um, again, uh, trying to be proactive and trying to be positive, uh, you know, um, one of the things we, we, we are going to look at is uh, to see whether, you know, uh, we look at uh, doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, one semester uh, online, um, where, uh, you know, the students have uh, all the resources, you know, uh, available to them. They for all purposes, they would be considered as full-time students, but uh, in case, you know, uh, there are issues regarding travel restrictions and they can't make it here, uh, you know, in, in, um, you know, by the end of October, let's say, uh, then, you know, we could actually do, uh, this, uh, you know, a semester uh, online um, and then they come over, you know, for a January or February uh, semester. We are looking at those kind of things. What, yeah, what we need to... Uh, it's a little bit too early to, um, you know, to, to say uh, anything about September at the moment, which is why, uh, you know, we are continuing accepting applications and making offers for September. We will probably wait until the end of June, possibly July, see what the situation is like, and then take a call on whether or not, uh, you know, we defer uh, the September start to maybe um, a January or, or a February start. Uh, so... I'm just hoping that, you know, things uh, smooth out, not just in the UK, but, uh, you know, travel restrictions are lifted and, and uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing, even if travel restrictions are lifted, it not depend on how quickly the UK VI can start its uh, offices, how quickly can uh, the Nepal government start issuing no yeah. objection certificates and all that, you see. Uh, so perhaps, you know, 
maybe in the next month or so we can have another little get together like this and and see you know what has uh, transpired you know over the over the next uh, three to four weeks. Yeah, that's why like that that's that's why like BJ education just come out and I, that's why I said like month of May is month of BJ education virtual education fair. So this month we're gonna give all the advice. You know, every day we have a, a, a different university, different fairs. So you're gonna get the information every day now. So if anything come out in UK, we'll just pass it to you. So that means like uh, we're gonna know like whether the September intake happened or not, or whether we have to move to January. Okay. So uh, there are several factors we need to look out, and we, I can't give the answer right now. It's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. it happen. If you ask me, like you know, uh, personally, I said it might not. But like uh, it's all uh, depends on the governments and policies, you know. Uh, so this is not the uh, the kind of bacteria we can kill. It's the virus. So there are so many things going on. Uh, so that's why, like, be positive, okay. But what I want, you know, I want my student to know about why they come in UK, what they want to do in their future, and whether they are choosing right country or not, right course or not, right university or not. Okay, this is the platform they can discuss with the university lead, say university head. Okay, so there is no other question than Raji explain about University of Bolton. Okay, this is the one time a chance to talk to him. Okay, and so these are the platform we are creating now. So for every student, I insist, okay, come and discuss. Every month, like we're gonna have a, this kind of event now for every university. Okay, 30 days, 30 universities. So uh, let's see like, you know, uh, things better and we'll welcome you in the UK. Okay, and uh, uh, so for that one, your research, your like, uh, you know, hard work is more important thing than our report. Okay, so please do your research. If you're at home, if you apply for business management, go to the business management page, choose the course, have a look at the course, choose the module. And if you're able to talk to any student who are doing here in business management, particular university, talk to him, get them some idea, get them some course module. You can, you can start, you can prepare yourself. You know, if some students share their information to you and you can share those things, just be like a, you know, like a smart boy. Okay. Uh, so if you guys want, like we, we are going to have another session with the, all the university students in one place and they're going to discuss like a virtual fear. So we are doing that one, but we need uh, feedback from your side as well, whether this is enough for you or not, or you need something extra, something else. Okay. Please let us know. Your feedback is really important for us. Okay. So we are waiting for the student feedback. Okay. So once everything sorted out, then uh, we're going to have a, a, some kind of information session. So. Uh, that's why I said earlier as well, uh, September intake, so we have our end of October, okay, so let's hope things will uh, all right. Um, so that's that's my view on like whether COVID uh, gonna affect September intake or not. So anything, anyone, I think uh, we cover everything today, okay, Usa, you can conclude the session now. Yeah, I, I think we've almost covered all uh the queries. Uh, so I'd like to thank Raji uh, like uh, a lot for taking out this time to come in uh, and provide this, uh, like not face to face, but virtually providing information to the students uh, uh, and answering to their queries as well. And thank you everyone, um, all the students for being a part of this uh, Biz Education Virtual Fair. Uh, if you have any doubts in future then you can always uh, contact us in our facebook and also through uh, uh, our website and you uh, we are available in whatsapp as well so uh, yeah thank you so much uh, for today well, thank you everyone and um, i will be in touch uh, and um, you know as uh, as usha mentioned you know any queries you know please contact biz um, and it's been a privilege chatting to all of you uh, as they say keep safe and well and you know we will get in touch together hopefully in not too long in in, in the near future sure all right take care bye bye now bye see you